lovelies. I'm Mina and I'm back in my studio, which means it's miniature time. <laughs> I know many of you are uh, looking forward to that. <laughs> okay, so I have a little, this is the closest I think I've ever gotten to a script. <laughs> a little list of things I want to cover in the intro of this video. So let's jump into it. Okay, first off, uh, welcome. I've already done that. Whether you've been to this channel before or it's your first time here, I'm glad you're here. You're more than welcome. Feel free to stick around. <laughs> yep, even with, I'm still awkward. Anyway. Okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> so something that just pff, mind blown in about a month and a half, that's how long it's been since I celebrated 200 subscribers along on my YouTube journey. And in that time, I have almost doubled that number. There are, in total, like 368 of you since I last checked. And I just, I, wow, <laughs> that's incredible. 168 new people watching my stuff in a month and a half. That's awesome. Thank you so much from the bottom of my little heart. I am so appreciative that you like what I'm doing and you want to see more. And that's awesome. Thank you. So yeah, that's cool. Okay. <laughs> Moving along. I got a comment about a month ago and I've been saving it. So if you were the commenter, I have seen it and I am going to address it right now <laughs> because um, it was in response to that little miniature that I made with the plastic canvas. So the comment, and I'll share it like right there, came from Seven Piece Frog. Can you share the book that the pattern came from? Unfortunately, no, I can't share the actual book. After I made that little plastic canvas bathroom, I didn't really see a need to keeping the book. So I passed it on. I don't have it anymore. But I did a little bit of research from the time you left that comment to now. And I was able to find a photo, which I'll post right there. And as you can see on screen, it's the American School of Needlework Plastic Canvas Fashion Doll Bathroom by Cooler Design Studio. So Seven Piece Frog, I hope that helps. Uh, I hope maybe you're able to track that book down if that's what you're looking for. My mother-in-law found it for me at a thrift shop locally. So you might be able to find it like on Etsy, eBay, something like that. And the other part of that comment was asking how I made the toilet paper roll. That right there is the item in question. So I'll use this piece of paper because I don't have any more plastic canvas. I was just given a bunch from, again, my mother-in-law. I used up pretty much all of the plastic canvas making that little bathroom and this little Halloween house, that's basically all I had. So basically what I did to make the toilet paper roll is I had a little rectangle of plastic canvas and I just, if you can see sort of up close, what you're doing with plastic canvas is basically cross stitch. So if you're familiar with cross stitch, that's basically what it is. It's just on a bigger scale. So you just cross stitch it all out, cover it in white, or, you know, if you're going retro, pink, yellow, whatever. And so you just cover your rectangle of plastic canvas in your yarn of choice. And then what I did is 
just rolled it and then stitched it together. So I had the little tube that I could put a pipe cleaner through and the little flap that hung down. I hope that helps. It's the best I can do with what I've got. Um, but I think that makes sense. So thank you very much for your comment, Seven Piece Frog. I hope that answered it. And yeah, thank you so much, everybody else who's been commenting. So far, the majority of the comments have been uh, wonderfully kind and encouraging. And I love that. I um, highly encourage any comments that are left to please be done so with a compassionate heart and an open mind, uh, whether it's towards me or with each other. Let's just keep this a, a positive space for everybody. Now we're getting into the meat of this video. So, this is March. Hello, welcome to March. <laughs> if you indiscriminately watch all of my videos, then you'll already know that last month was Foodie February and I did food related videos. So I'm continuing on the alliteration train this month and calling this March Miniature Madness for a bunch of reasons. Okay, so as I mentioned in my update video a while ago, the miniature aspect of it is because of Barbie. Because March is Barbie doll's birthday. So I'm making, we'll get to that in a minute, a miniature, well, Barbie size, one sixth scale doll room. And that's what I'm gonna be sharing throughout the course of this month. Uh, I went with the like March Madness because, you know, it's like, it's a college basketball thing. Yeah, I don't really, it's more like a US thing than a Canadian thing, so I'm not that familiar with it. But I thought, hey, if it helps drive traffic to my <laughs> video, <laughs> why not? I, I decided to run with it. And also, I went with the, <laughs> the madness turned out to be a good thing. Not really, though. Um, I guess it turned out to be a relevant thing because th this room back here, <laughs> it may drive away what little sanity I have left. <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll, we'll get to the why and how hmm, in a little bit. Okay, so moving along with the struggles of this project. Knowing that this was coming up, I started it early. So there were some things that I completed. I mean, clearly you can see it's an upright room. You might be able to see the duct tape here. I started this room before March, before I started filming, because I knew it would be a big process and I wanted to be able to get as much as I could um, sort of done off screen so it would make the filming easier and all that kind of stuff. And the part that I was trying to get ready ahead of time not only proved to be more difficult than I anticipated, but also last week my cat died. He had been struggling with hyperthyroidism for a couple years and we had that under control for the most part. Unfortunately, it started to take the kidneys with it. And in the end, that's what did it. Um, he went into kidney failure and there was nothing we could do. So my family and I had to say goodbye to our sweet little ashy boy last week. And I have not been okay. <laughs> uh, I cried a lot, obviously, the day we said goodbye. And not too many tears have been shed since then. I have, however, been dealing with a lot of anger and just numb emptiness. I uh, lost focus. I started doing some of this work and filming before that happened. Um, before Ash really went downhill. And you may be able to tell 
in the following clips that we'll eventually get to. But I'm continuing because I do find that working on this is helping me to process and so yeah. Um, that said though, I think this is going to be a longer process than I expected. I was, when I was planning this video, I thought two videos, two parts. The first would be building the actual room and then the second would be building all the like furniture accessories and stuff inside and then done. I don't think that's going to be the case. I think the building of the room is going to need at least two videos, maybe even three. We'll see. Yeah, so I, I hope that I hope you're okay with that. I hope you're along for the ride. I hope you don't mind that this is sort of an extended part of the reason that I want to do this is because I find it valuable to share the process. I don't always, as much as I love the videos that, you know, show you the, the step by step and then you can follow along. I like honesty. I like knowing ahead of time that, hey, if you're going to build this brick wall, it's going to take four days. If you're going to make these miniature pots, it's going to take you know two or three days because dry time and you know for each step and that kind of thing so rather than speed through everything i'm also sharing a little bit of the process to let you know hey this takes a while and also because i can't really i can't really speed through everything uh today is wednesday and i want to get this video up tomorrow for thursday there's no way that i'm going to be able to get the room to where I want it completely done. I'm just, I'm hurting for time. So I'm gonna have to complete it to the point that I'm okay with uh, today and then edit this monster and get it up tomorrow. And then we'll continue on in subsequent videos. Well, that was all the points that I wrote down. Let's jump into the room. Sound good? Sounds good, okay. Let's get to it. So here is the room. I have a floor and two walls. They're all made with foam board. This was left over from the supplies that I bought when I made the first Barbie doll room. Linked up above and down below. It can easily be acquired at Dollar Tree. So it's affordable material. The floor is 18 by 14 inches. The shorter wall is 14 inches across by 13 inches tall. And this longer wall is 13 inches tall by 18 inches long. And as you can see, not only have I glued the walls and the floor together to create the base of the room, I have also started to add finishes. So what I did with this wall, again, if you've seen my first Barbie room, you'll recognize this pattern. It's a contact paper or shelf liner paper. It's this pretty, like a plasticky paper that's sticky. So like a giant sticker that you use for lining shelves and drawers. I really like it for this application. It's a very easy wallpaper. So all I did for this was just wrap the, the foam board before I glued it in place, just so I could get these nice, neat edges. For the floor, this is also that contact paper or shelf liner in a wood pattern. As you can see though, when it's the giant roll of shelf liner it just it looks too big to be realistic looking in the room so what i did is cut it up so it looks more like floorboards how i achieved the floorboards was with this grid that's printed on the back of the contact paper these are one inch by one inch squares. So what I did is cut strips 
like that following the grid. So I had one inch wide strips and I just cut in different lengths. And when I laid them down, I overlapped just a tiny little bit. So I got that plank flooring kind of look. And I think it turned out quite nice. It breaks up the giant pattern and makes it look more like a realistic-ish floor. Now I didn't go all the way to the back because something is going there, but that's for another video. And same with this little spot. When I started the floor, I made sure to wrap the front. I just thought that would look nice. And when I started, I went right to the edge. I did this before I glued the wall on, but towards the back, I didn't end up doing that. You don't have to lay the floor before you put the walls. You can construct it first and then put them in. If you're going to do a baseboard, I'm going to put a baseboard in later. So it really didn't matter that I overlapped because that's getting covered anyway. This part of the wall at the back here is being left blank. Like I said, something is going there, but we'll get there. I drew a line about five inches in from the edge and stopped the wood flooring at that line. This is going to be something else, but I haven't decided exactly what or how I'm going to do it. So that I'm putting that off for later. And I started on this wall because I wanted to see if what I was hoping I could do, I could do. What I'm aiming for is that this is going to be inside and these five inches here are going to be outside. So I wanted an exterior looking brick wall. I could have gone with paper, except that I couldn't find any brick pattern, scrapbook paper, contact paper, anything like that at my local Dollar Tree. And I wanted to keep this as affordable as possible. So I, rather than go to Michael's, I could have, you know, done that to get scrapbook paper or gone online or something. But rather than do that, I thought I would try a technique that I've used in the past and loved. And that's the egg carton bricks. And we'll get to explaining that in a little bit. Um, I'll go through the process and show you how I did that, as well as what I ended up using for the mortar. It's a little messy, but I, I like it. I think it turned out pretty good. So that's that's what we're starting with right now. This is what I've put together to begin with, what we're going to do together, so I can show you how this works, is put in another wall. Now for this, I have another piece of foam board, and this is going to go right here where that line is. This foam board is 13 inches tall and about 14 inches wide. And I'm going to be doing something super special, I hope, to this wall. So I have made some measurements here, 12 inches from the bottom and 8 inches across. And I've moved it in about an inch and a half away from the edge. Now I'm going to cut this out. This is how this wall is going to go in with the smaller bit on the outside and the bigger bit on the inside. On this side, I'm going to do the bricking, and on this side, the wallpaper. We're going to start with the wallpaper first because it will be easier to cover the wallpaper up with the bricking. So this is basically all I have left, this piece and this piece. Okay, so I think what I'm going to end up doing is putting it like this so that there's a tiny little seam up here and that's it. The rest of it will be like a nice big piece. I 
made sure to leave some extra up at the top so it can wrap over and some extra on this side so it can wrap over. I'm not too concerned here because this side is going to glue to the inside of the box that we've already made. Since this is already sticking to itself, I'm going to go ahead and start cutting and fixing up this side before I start working with the other side. Smoothing out the lumps and bumps, even though it's going to be covered, I want to make sure I have a nice smooth surface to glue the egg carton to. So there's half. Now I just have to worry about matching up the pattern on the other side. And yes, I probably should have figured this out before I took the backing off, but I'm living dangerously. well done. This little edge I'm going to be wrapping because this will be outside and I just want it to look nice and finished. There we have it. Now, before I glue this into the room, I'm going to brick up this side of the wall, which requires some prep work. So for that, we need an egg carton. I'm gonna cut the lid from the base. Set that aside for now. And now the most valuable real estate on this thing are all the flat pieces. So I'm going to cut all of those now. Oh, okay, put this aside as well. So we're going to be cutting the strips out, and this has a little bit of a rounded edge. So I'm going to cut that down, making my pieces as big as I can. Okay. 
Okay, so starting off with a strip here. This is just shy of an inch in thickness. Now, I switch out the craft knife for scissors for this part, otherwise it shreds. What I'm going to do now is mark what I'm cutting. So I cut a little bit off at the end. So I have a nice squared piece. Each of these bricks will end up being one inch long by a half an inch high. This is from a previous egg curtain that I used for the wall that's already done. I'm just going to use this to catch the pieces as I cut them. That gives you a good little pile of bricks, but we're going to need a lot more. So now we repeat about a million times. Okay, when cutting your bricks, I recommend being as precise as you can be, but don't beat yourself up, up over it. This like isn't a perfect rectangle, and that's okay because man-made bricks aren't perfect either. There's, you know, that human element of error. So, if your bricks aren't exactly uniform, that's okay. It'll give them like a more natural look. And also, I'm keeping these smaller bits because, as you can see in my original wall, half bricks on the outside on both sides. You never know if you're going to need half bricks, quarter bricks. So I keep the little pieces as well, just in case. And then you can use all your, like, pretty, quote-unquote, perfect-ish bricks for the bulk of it and use all the little scraps for all your little fill-in bits. And once the bulk of all your straight pieces are done, then you can go in and use the other parts of the egg carton. What I like to do with these is cut out each each individual little egg cup. I'll find a spot that clearly will not fit a brick and cut up there and then cut around the bottom to open it up. Now because these are shaped to fit an egg, I'll squish that back down, kind of form it with my thumb to make a flat, as flat as possible surface and use one of the bricks that I've already cut as a template. To cut bricks out from the egg cups. And with these it looks like I'll be able to get four, maybe five, because I don't want to go too much on too many of the, the molded parts. If I can't flatten them I don't really want to use it because then that could end up really like warping and messing up the brick wall. This little trio of egg cups is full of bricks. I still have more that I can cut out. I'm going to work with what I have before I get overwhelmed. Or than I already am. As in I'm already overwhelmed. But anyway. 
So I'm just using regular tacky glue to glue all these down. So I'm starting at the bottom with full bricks, putting a little space in between each one, not too much. And I'm lining it up basically right with the bottom. Got out a new bottle of glue for this, and I still have to smack it around to get the glue out. Oh, that's oh, gonna be frustrating fast. Okay, anyway, so I'm gonna pause on finishing that row for a second. For the next row, I line up in between those two bricks with the middle of the next row, like that, so they're staggered. And again, just a little bit of a space in between the first and the second row. This is a perfect time to come in with the little half bricks. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna put this one on the second row. So, cause that looks, that looks pretty good there. So what I'm gonna do is flip this one over so I'm not getting marker on the good side. I'm going to line it up where I want it to go and then make a little mark. Oh, and before I forget, let's move all of these over if I can, because I'm just using this as my spacer because I'm thinking there's going to be a door frame. Yep, that'll still be good. Okay. Okay, so then this little piece that I cut, goes right there. And I think I'm gonna hang on to this stir stick, make sure I get everything lined up so that there's room for the door frame. And so now on this side, there's just a tiny little bit I'm going to bring the wall back in for a minute because this is a little bit three-dimensional. So I might be able to squeeze that in. Yep. That'll fit. Okay, so in order to fit this wall with the other wall, I'm going to need a little bit of space all the way up. So I'm going to leave a little bit inside for a door frame here. And a little bit in here so it fits snug against the other wall. And now we continue. Above the hole in the wall, there ended up being a perfect amount of space for two rows of bricks. However, I wanted to leave that about a quarter of an inch for the door frame, so I ended up taking a regular brick and cut it in half, and that was the perfect amount of space to fill up that little space between the row of bricks and the space I wanted to leave for the door frame.
I have cut a bunch of coffee stir sticks and started out like that so that they can frame the hole in the wall and now I'm going to paint them white. So the wall was a little warped and white glue wasn't working. So I went in with hot glue, which seems to have done the trick at least for now. Except that now I've got all sorts of gaps in my door frame, which is what the wood glue is for. So it doesn't really matter that I just painted everything white because uh, I'm going to have to go in and do it again anyway. Cover up all the wood glue. Yay! Um, should I be using wood filler? It, probably. But I don't think we have any so I'm just going to use what I have and hope for the best. <laughs> Oh, I am mixing up a mixture of black paint, white paint, and wood glue. This is what I used for the mortar because the wood glue doesn't disappear, it doesn't shrink quite like white glue. There's still a little bit of shrinkage though, but it's not as bad. So now I'm just sloppily painting this on in between the bricks. And it's sloppy partly because I don't necessarily want it to look clean. Again, I want this to look like it's like man-made. However, I don't really have a choice in the matter either because um, wood glue dries faster than I would like. And unless I want to waste what I've made, I have to slap it on as fast as possible. If there is a better way of doing this, please let me know because I couldn't find anything. When I searched up things to use for mortar, all I could find were things like joint compound, caulking, assuming that's not the same thing. I don't really know. And that kind of stuff is probably a great idea for 
actual bricks, if you're going to make, you know, real miniature bricks, that's probably a great thing to use. However, it's not necessarily the best option for egg carton bricks. This is going to take forever. <laughs> And that's as far as I was able to get. Not quite up to the top. Which actually, that's not bad. Especially considering there were quite a few areas down here that I had to touch up. Because I don't mind a little bit of definition around the bricks. I just don't like when it like puddles and becomes like holes. Oh, there's still quite a ways to go, but... That'll do for now. My next concern will now be keeping this flat. Okay, now that the wall is finished, it's time to glue it in place. And hot glue is needed. Uh, I knew I had one of these silicone finger protectors. Let's see if that helps. Is that hot glue burns? That helps. <laughs> 